Welcome everyone to another episode of the VM Blog Expert Interview Series. Today we're excited to have with us Sumit Puri, the CEO of Liquid. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. We're glad you're here. So before we dive in, I just wanted to see if you could give our viewers uh, just a quick background on, uh, on the company just to set the stage. Absolutely. Um, Liquid is a six plus year old startup company. Um, we are in the software defined infrastructure space. Uh, our core technology is something referred to as composable disaggregated infrastructure. And we'll share with you guys today what we mean by that. Um, we are a venture backed company and we are headquartered in the Denver area with sales offices in Texas, New York and California. What exactly are the problems that your company solves? Absolutely. So the first real question that we try to address is around resource utilization of hardware inside the data center. If we take a look at what the industry analysts are talking about, they're talking about hardware utilization inside the data center sitting at, you know, 10, 15, 20% in many cases. And the reason why that is in our belief is these servers are configured at the point of purchase and they're deployed as static assets inside the data center for three to five years. And we hope that we are determining the best assets for that server well ahead of the, the primary use of those devices. So our value proposition around disaggregation and composability has to fundamentally do with increasing the resource utilization of that very expensive hardware that you're deploying in the data center. And our fundamental mantra is, do more with less. If we can take a, a hardware rack that is utilized 20% of the time because it's statically defined and squeeze 40% utilization out of that rack by making it dynamically configurable, we think that's the single biggest knob we can turn for TCO in the data center. Now, um, you know, virtualization and disaggregation, they seem to be kind of contradictory in nature. Um, if virtualization is doing the work on top of like a you know, tightly converged hardware, then disaggregating and seems to undermine you know, your value proposition. Could you maybe explain why that's not the case? Yeah, so absolutely. They seem contradictory, but our actual belief is HCI plus CDI is the marriage of, of, of best of both worlds. Hyper-converged infrastructure deployed on disaggregated pools of resources is how we get the maximum benefit. Virtualization is great. Hyperconvergence is great. You're going to get a fantastic result when you deploy that hypervisor on top of a static box, but you're going to get a better result when you deploy that hypervisor on top of dynamic infrastructure. When the hypervisor can say, hey, give me another SSD so I can slice and dice it. Give me another GPU because I have a VDI workload that needs it. That is the marriage of the two technologies. So we don't see disaggregation replacing virtualization. We see disaggregation making virtualization even that much more efficient. And why is the ability to manage hardware through software so important uh, to these efforts? Well, one of the things that we like to talk about is think about something like vSAN or VMware, for example. How do we consume those physical assets? We go buy a box. We pay for our VMware license, for example. We virtualize the resources inside that box. And when I'm done virtualizing those resources, I buy another box and pay for another VMware license. With disaggregation, we don't do that. When my x86 processor runs out of physical resources to virtualize on top of, we don't buy another box and pay for more software. We compose more physical resources into that x86 processor and then virtualize on top of those. So as disaggregation and composability can be more efficient for hardware utilization, we believe we can be equally efficient for software utilization. And it doesn't matter if we're talking SAP, Oracle, VMware, everyone is charging for software in a similar manner, which is charged by x86. And so when we can break that decoupling of x86 to software, we think we can fundamentally change the way that software is consumed. Well, definitely, you know, the, uh, the world has changed in uh, the, the past few weeks. Um, so that brings me to my next question is, why is it important to be able to add accelerator technologies such as like GPUs, FPGAs, uh, when the IT departments are 
now by necessity accommodating remote workers. Actually, it's, it's interesting, right? What we're seeing is, of course, there's an impact from COVID to overall business conditions, which is detrimental. There is also a piece of this where it is helping certain IT infrastructure companies because we are being forced to go build that backend infrastructure to support all of these remote employees that are, we are going off and servicing now. Uh, we actually think composability and disaggregation is an interesting technology because what we're doing is we're taking humans out of the equation. When I can go into the data center and I can reconfigure my physical infrastructure without actually sending a human in there, we think that there's benefit there. When I can determine that, you know what, I know for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have this spike in remote VDI users, we can take GPUs that are laying idle in other parts of the organization and compose them into those nodes for the workload at hand, right? So yes, there has been some negative impact, obviously, to everything that's been going on with COVID and it's been tragic. Um, we feel technologies like software defined actually can help address some of the problems that are created by that. And then coming at it from a different angle, how does you know disaggregated composability affect traditional buying cycles for the data center? And and how do you square that with you know OEM or reseller partners? You know, we get some customers who say, you know what, dynamic is not my pain. I, I know my workload is very predictable. Why am I going to take this journey of disaggregation with you guys? And there's a whole bunch of reasons why we go off and disaggregate beyond just dynamically being able to move things around. Number one is around scalability, right? What's the fundamental problem with hyperconvergence? It's converged. As we scale out, I end up with too much of one thing or not enough of another, right? So with disaggregation, it is absolutely the most efficient way to go off and scale out. The second benefit is extended product life cycle, right? We work with companies who say, I've invested in all this compute horsepower, now I want GPUs. Well, how many GPUs can you put in a blade server? Well, the answer is zero. With disaggregation, I can come in in a brownfield environment, put a tray of GPUs at the top of the rack, connect it to their existing blade environment and give new life to the gear that they've already invested in. I, I can decouple their purchasing decisions, right? If I go to a large OEM and I say, I want 10 GPUs in a box, guess what? I'm probably getting quad processor. No choice about it. 10 GPU equals quad proc. With disaggregation, I can buy a single proc CPU and connect it to 20 GPUs if that's what I wanna do. So we decouple those purchasing decisions by going disaggregated. I, I enable the impossible configuration, right? Go give me a pizza box with 20 GPUs. Nobody on the planet has it. Nobody builds it. Nobody would. Doesn't make any sense. Power, heat, cooling, PCIe lanes. We can compose you a box with 20 GPUs and 150 SSDs and everything is gonna feel local like it was inside that box, right? And, and pay as you grow. I may not wanna buy all my NVMe storage now. I may wanna buy some of it now and have empty trays in the future and then add just storage as I go. Basically pay as I grow to more efficiently scale out. So these are the reasons why people disaggregate beyond just the ability to dynamically move things around. How do you imagine uh, the now disaggregated hyperconverged data center will look like in five years? That's a, that's a tough question. I can barely do three years out, but um, you know, we, we think disaggregation is real. We think disaggregation is the future. We think disaggregation is today where technologies like hyperconvergence were, you know, maybe three to five years ago, right? So there's no doubt in our mind that customers see the benefit of why we disaggregate. We go in to talk to a lot of customers. Nobody ever says, that's a horrible idea. That's dumb. I don't know why you would do that. They want to know cost. They want to know performance. They want to know flexibility. And they want to know, is this actually real? Because what you're telling me just kind of seems too good to be true. So there's that disbelief portion of it. So our belief five years from now, the world will very much be a disaggregated world. We think the data centers of the future are not necessarily big boxes in Arizona, but maybe more regional deployments close to the point of data, close to the antenna or servicing a handful of antennas. Those locations are inherently limited by power, by floor space, by cooling, by human access. So with disaggregation and composability, if we can raise rack utilization from 20% to 40%, we think we're an inherent fit for those next generation data centers by, that are limited by all of those things we discussed. And 
you know, oh, by the way, sending a human out there can be taken out of the equation. So we have no doubt disaggregation is the future. We have no doubt hyperconvergence on top of disaggregation is a real trend. We're doing it today. vSAN on top of disaggregated resources is a real thing. And we're doing that today. Um, and our question is, how quickly does the market move there? Well, great. Where can viewers go after they watch this uh, to learn more about this particular topic and the company? Where's the best place uh, that they should go? And is there something they can see in action? Absolutely. The easiest place to go is our website, www.liquid.com. This is liquid without the U. Uh, I like to joke and say the only thing missing is you, but uh, <laughs> nonetheless, uh, let us know what you want. A ton of information out there, a ton of videos. Reach out to us. We're happy to show you a live uh, test, a live demonstration, and we're happy to give anyone a test drive uh, through remote login if, if they're so inclined. Well, great. Well, thanks again for taking time to speak with VM Blog. We uh, we really appreciate you taking time out today. Yeah, thank you. Be safe. Yes. Take care, everyone. Be safe. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more from our cloud technology partners, please hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, and if you want to get notified next time we post a video, please hit the subscribe and the bell notification. Very important.